which is also the point at which um, I realized that where my ex was, and where my ex now, um, but at the time we were dating, and it was kind of a clicking point where I realized we weren't gonna make it. And so um, we were kind of sitting on the couch, and, and I was just like, I, I, I don't think we can do this anymore. And she gives me this look, and then she just like collapses to the floor, um, which is exceptionally awkward because this is my first breakup. Um, and <laughs> Ouch. Uh, so I, you know, she starts crying, and I'm like, you, and, and the only thing that can come to my mind is, you've got to stop crying, you're going to wake up my parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no. And so, um, and, and once again, I didn't realize until, until you know, afterwards, that um, about a couple minutes later, I was like, you know, there were probably more sensitive ways to go about that particular situation. Um, and I still suffer for, we're, we're friends, you know, now, so I mean, I still Sure you are, <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's what they all say. And one of the things that we always talked about was that, you know, a lot of things that you write about are in one way or another autobiographical, you know, you have some sort of internal content. Um, do you feel like your book, you know, kind of hits some crucial points? And if it hits a point that's sensitive, how do you write through that? Well, actually, it's totally fictional work because I've never even met a man. I've never, you know, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of overlap in my life. But I felt it, what's really helpful is, um, and you're right that, you know, everything has an internal I, I think of it kind of like any story you might write, and I like to write short stories as well. Um, when you dream and you have all these characters in your dream, they're kind of like shadow selves. So people, you know, your world is your oyster. You can pick any person you want. You could use material and details from their life, and you can shift it. And I felt halfway through writing the book that I really did fictionalize it because I didn't have an axe to grind. I didn't want to do a Jerry Springer tell-all or a confessional style. And I also felt I could free me up to um, remember things that happened, even though I wasn't really remembering them in, in terms of you know, the actual verity of it. I, you know, just kind of what I guess Lucy Greeley says when she wrote that book, Anatomy of a Face, if any of you have read that. And people said, oh my god, how did you remember all those details? And she said, wait a second, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't remember it, I wrote it. And that's what I think. Um, in response to your question, that I think writing is different than remembering. But you do remember, and there's a lot of unconscious and emotional content that's coming out when you write. And you're filling in to the details so that it will make sense to someone who's reading it. And it will it's a sort of a, a worn path through uh, just all of these things that you could say. But then you make a path, and you choose. You choose different things, and, you, and it serves from A to B. So the reader has meaning. I mean, there's meaning and there's, I mean, your job as a writer isn't to confound or befuddle people. So yes, you do choose whatever you want, but it has to be, it has to make sense from a structural and a tone standpoint and craft. I mean, there's a lot of craft involved, obviously. Am I my, am I my editor? No, Pardon me? No, I'm sorry. I, th I thought you were just kidding. No. No, what? <laughs> no, no I, I wasn't sure what. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a second. <laughs> but it, I guess it, it's, it, it, it is nice to, I guess, you know, as, a, as a, an attempt at, you know, I'm, I'm attempting to write um, and just hitting those points where, you know, you encounter the sort of, um, you know, the emotional content behind what you're writing. And it's just, um, you know, especially when you can write about a, a severe situation such as a, a heartbreak or something like that trying to write about it because um, I'm too scared. But, <laughs> um, but I, I think you need to get that distance. And it, um, I think our parents had their world war, and we have divorce. That's actually a quite a good theme, because I think it is a, a, a goes across the board. I mean, there's so many people who have gone through breakups or very severe divorces. And it is becoming enough of a theme that I think we can make art out of it. But it's kind of difficult. You have to you do have to have a vehicle, so I think the confessional style isn't necessarily one that would be a good one for this. You'd maybe fictionalizing it, or I mean, it's like anything. You know, there's there's all kinds of stories about love, and tons of them, Anna Karenina, or you know, anything you can think of. And people keep telling the story over and over again. 
just has to be told in a way that um, you know is interesting to people and not you know cliche or, or just oh I fell in love and she had a heart of gold and she broke my heart you know so. Oh, I'm sorry. Not to generate? Can you say that again? To generate your writing. What, what kind of techniques did you uh, do to, to generate your flow of thought? And what authors influenced you? Well, um, I tend to stay up all night, which is a very bad thing. <laughs> but it's because I have, I teach piano during the day. And um, so I sit at the piano and then I think, I mean, I sit at the keyboard and think, um, you know, computer. Oh, I'll just stay up for a few hours and write, and then suddenly the birds are chirping, and it's very scary. Um, so that kind of generates, because you get into this sort of fugue state of exhaustion. Um, and I finished the book that way. It was not a good way to do it. I started the, I started the book about 12 years ago with the most high-minded motive, um, revenge. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but then it quickly, um, instead of deteriorating, it sort of, a little more high-minded, and I realized it. actually what I'm writing about is love more than anything. And by the way, I don't usually sound like this. I've actually lost my voice two days ago, so I'm very sorry. But <coughs> I've got the, I've heard it's called the Charleston cough. Yeah, I have it from <laughs> Chicago, though, so it's bizarre. But anyway, to generate writing, um, again, I just think it has to be a habit. You know, it has to be something that you just, you do, and in my case, um, I think I started it a long time ago, but then I, I, had a, uh, um, I had a theater company, so I did one-woman shows, and, and then I directed a little bit, so I kind of put it on hold for many years. And then Undoing I Do became kind of a little musical I did in Chicago. And from a musical, I went to Ragdale, which is in Lake Forest, and then I kind of started the, to fiendishly concentrate on the book and the core writing of it. And then um, I got an agent through, um, it's, a, it's a very good agent in New York, but he actually lost my work about five times in a row. So it just shows you that, you know, you'll send it and they'll say, oh, I lost it. And then you'll send it again. So I lost it. So eventually it could work, but it's a little bit akin to being struck by lightning, I guess. But, and I'm probably the oldest first time novelist to be published in the United States, <laughs> I think. I think they're usually looking for 20 year olds, but. Um, I feel honored, you know. Um, and it should generate writing in my influences. Um, well, I really like this, this one book, which I told Letitia about. It was the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1955, um, Sigrid Unset's book, La, uh, Kristen Lavren's Daughter. And I really like her style. It's very terse and very dry, but it's in the 14th century, so it's this incredibly fabulous tale. And um, other influences. I don't know, when I was writing the book, I guess, um, I just read all the time, so I read all kinds of things, and I read poetry, I read short stories, I read Frank O'Connor, I read metaphysical poetry, just anything to sort of just have fun while I'm doing it. And there's a lot of people, like Dorothy Parker had said, I guess famously, that some people like to have written. I actually like writing. I enjoy it. To me, it's kind of like practicing the piano. It's just fun. I just enjoy it. And I love editing. So um, I think the editing process is so fabulous because it gets better and better, or it should. And when my editor in New York would say, oh, could you take out this paragraph or something? I'd say, take the whole chapter out. She'd be like, what? I'd go, oh, just take out 50 pages right there. And I took out like 150 pages of the book. So it was a lot longer. But I just love killing my babies. I just really enjoy it. <laughs> and because I, I think it gets it better. It just streamlines it much more. And so people who want to hang on to their work, I'm like trying to say to them, don't hang on to it. Just there's more where that came from. You know, just don't don't be afraid to let go. So uh, authors, what 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 are what some of your favorite authors? I I probably just love them all. I don't. I'm reading Willa Cather right now, Song of the Lark. I've. Uh, My ex-fiance was related to Willa Cather. Pardon me. My ex-fiance was related to Willa Cather. Oh, very cool. Okay, neat.